why do a phd hmm. you are probably not thinking of a phd but in this episode i'm hoping to convince a few of you that maybe you should do a phd phd yes um so too much too much it is no it is not too much it is no it is not so that is what we will talk about okay. right so <laughs> <laughs> your reaction Haan. is one of the common reactions right i think that comes from a significant misunderstanding Haan. of what really a phd involves why people, uh, what are the benefits uh, and drawbacks of doing a phd right so let's talk about that yeah i uh, benefits of doing a phd i don't i don't know matlab you spend 7 years doing a phd and okay. then you end up becoming a professor in some college or you end up becoming an expert on kbc that you sometimes get called and sometimes and most often don't get called or i don't know what what even are the benefits i okay let me let me actually sit down and recount yeah. you are considered an expert in whatever field yeah. you do your phd in yeah. or you become a lecturer professor in some hmm. college hmm. or uh, what could be another advantage of doing a phd you don't get to go into industry because phd means academics yeah. you become Right. a lecturer lectures don't get paid enough yeah. they, they so don't all of they these just... are misconceptions okay or maybe you just want to yeah. show that you can do a phd hey yeah. dimag yeah so uh, i say all of these are misconceptions okay uh, although in this episode i am primarily talking about phd in a stem field science okay. technology uh, i'm not talking about a humanities phd primarily because i don't that's not my area i don't understand i do i have a phd in computer science Uh, so let Doesn't me talk about, about that right so uh, first of all just because you have done a phd hmm. doesn't mean that you have to become a professor or a lecturer and doesn't mean that you have to work only in academia okay it doesn't mean you have to do research a lot of phd's do end up going to uh, industry you are an exception in that no, case navin that is not true the number of academic jobs and uh. the number of phd's if you compute you know that most phds are not ending up in academia because there aren't that many academic jobs yeah but they, they probably this way. they okay. probably end up somewhere they no, no. where where okay let me put it this way right ha. if the only purpose of doing a phd ha. was for you to become a prof ha. who will teach other students to become a phd then it would be a ponzi scheme <laughs> right and Which... the very fact that it is not a ponzi scheme means that there you are still have the reasons to do a phd you still have to prove that part so i'm holding you to it he said it i didn't yeah. but yeah, yeah. No, ponzi so, scheme remember um, the phrase industry does higher phds right yeah. so i mean of course i'm not denying industry a whole bunch of uh, uh, people ha. who did their phds with me ha. are uh, in industry some of them directly joined large companies some of them joined small companies some of them started their own companies became successful those got acquired by google hmm. and all kinds of things right hmm. so uh industry does want phd's i mean and this is not true just of computer science or chemical in, uh, engineering and all of that hmm. even economics psychology phd's are being hired by say facebook and amazon and netflix okay yeah so, uh okay fine i i concede that right hmm. so um and the other misconception hmm. is that oh once you do a phd then you have to do research that's not true either right then uh, why do a phd ah so let me talk about huh. what i see as the primary benefits of doing a phd okay it is not the research although the research helps huh. and it is not becoming an expert in that field okay hmm. uh for the simple reason hmm. that the world moves so fast hmm. especially in stem fields hmm. is that whatever you did your phd in hmm. might not even be a very hot area 10 years later right my advice phd advisor hmm. had done his phd in vlsi hmm. and he advised me uh, on a phd in databases right <laughs> i mean very little connection between vlsi and databases yeah right so uh, the thing is that if it was just about expertise in the field hmm. most phd's would be useless right you are not, not you are not helping your own case no. here so the important but still huh. all of these people do have a lot of value okay. all of them have great jobs great job satisfaction a lot of respect why why right one is that phd teaches you to learn how to learn right 
Okay, and you that is yeah. Huh. Pick up any new area quickly and more deeply than someone else. Okay, right? so learn how to learn. That's number one. Learn how to learn deeply. Learn how to learn deeply. Okay, fine. Okay. Hmm. Second is that it teaches you to become good at communicating complex things. Okay. Okay. Because you don't get a PhD unless you manage to publish a bunch of papers. You. do some research which nobody else has done before hmm. and hopefully i mean if you are doing a phd you will get deep into some complex topic ha huh. but it get needs to get published ha huh. and understood by people who are not deep in, into that same complex area right so you have to write the paper in a way that others can understand really yes. i always thought you were allowed to get away with a lot of jargon and what not see that is bad phd's are like that acha right bad <laughs> academics is like that but if you do it in a good place with a good advisor ha huh. right they all know that the person reading your paper is not going to be an expert in the field that you are in because right? you technically are becoming are, the expert the, in that field you are the expert field. right yeah. so um and usually huh. uh, i mean especially if uh, i mean uh, after a phd you are trying to become a professor hmm. right the committee that is evaluating you hmm. are going to be from a completely different area right they are hiring you because they want to bring in your expertise so in general a lot of the phd is about explaining a complex topic that only you and a few other people understand and explaining it to people who are not experts in that area but it takes such a long time navin it takes 6 7 8 10 years i don't yes, even know how much i never did this, it rikant we talked about this as an entire episode called the dip okay which basically yes. says that if it was easy it wouldn't give value right yes in fact a lot of the value that comes from the phd is because it is difficult right in fact i would put it this way right the dip in that episode we pointed out that this is uh, anything substantial you do in life hmm. is going to be difficult and long and around the 2 3 year mark hmm. you are going to feel that this is completely pointless i'm wasting my time and this is uh, you know i am never going to get past this and nobody cares and things like that a Story phd a phd hmm. teaches you to go through the dip in a safe environment Right? <laughs> Otherwise, you go through the drip in your career or in like trying to do a business or something. What uh, safe environment are you talking about? PhD. How is it safe environment? You are in a college. You are getting a stipend, right? And you are not like being uh, assessed every six months uh, and going to get fired if you didn't make progress, right? It does have a point. So a PhD one, it teaches you to go through the dip. Hmm. while you are going through the dip you are surrounded by other people who have themselves gone through the dip and know what you are going through and they are there to support you and for the rest of your life it marks you as a person who has gone through the dip right <laughs> most people don't that, realize it that is actually a medal of that's an achievement and right? i i agree with that part yes uh, i mean people don't realize it but yeah. there is a uh, uh, you know reputation that goes with being a phd when they call you doctor so and so yeah. uh, there like there's like a little aura around you and the reason is because you have gone through the dip you should a... actually be calling him doctor navin in all <coughs> episodes i i don't yes. because it's navin for no, me no, you want to call him doctor navin please feel free ha huh? you are yeah. absolutely welcome to do so yeah so um that those are the most important reasons right? yeah of course there is one more which is that if you have done a phd from a good university hmm. then that is a stamp on your forehead and in your resume which sticks with you for the rest of your life it does open doors there is reputational value in it it is a credential which matters you are making me think of doing a phd and i don't like it very much because it involves a lot of effort and i'm a lazy person but can anybody do a phd can i what i'm basically trying yeah. to ask is can i do a phd but can anybody do a phd so there are two different questions there can and should okay oh okay. so for can hmm. i think the most important thing about a phd hmm. is that you should be doing it with a really good advisor okay which okay. means that the advisor should be a known expert in that area who is well familiar with research in whatever area that you have picked right okay you cannot for phd during mm. the phd you have to do research right Correct. i said that 
after you have done a PhD doesn't necessarily mean that you have to continue doing research. But during the PhD, you have to do research mm -hmm. and you cannot do research without a good guide. That's somebody true. who knows the ropes. Otherwise, you will end up wasting time on a problem that nobody cares about. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you need a really good guide and preferably it should be in a really good college. Right. A college okay. with a brand name. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would say a PhD is not worth doing. Right. Don't do a PhD from like the local university just because it happens to be convenient. It's this, not worth it. This entire set of examples slash arguments is sounding very similar to that episode we did on uh, uh, how to choose a college after 12th. Yes, yes. And that the fundamental truth there, huh. right, is that if you are putting in a lot of effort into something, it huh. better be something difficult, right? If it is easy, it has no value. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it's easy come, easy go. So that's true. Yeah. That's true. So that is one, right? Uh -huh. If so, whether you can get in, right? Mm. If you are a student who's finished undergraduate recently, the last few years, mm. then it primarily boils down to whether you can get admitted to a PhD program in a well-known college, mm. uh, right? Uh, and that that decides whether you can or not. Correct. If you are somebody <laughs> further uh, along in your career. I think it primarily boils down to convincing a guide, guide, right? Because once a guide is convinced, the rest of it will fall into place. But mm. that brings they me will to move heaven, earth, and administration yeah. together to make that happen for right. you. Right. But that brings me to the second question, which is: Should you, for people who are in the middle of their career, possibly struggling with a midlife crisis, right? Um, I regularly run into people who say, you know, they want to do a PhD because they felt like their career was too shallow and they haven't gone deep into something. Mm. And I completely uh, agree with the sentiment, but I don't think a PhD is the best way to do that, right? In a PhD, you will end up fighting the bureaucracy of the college and the process and the system and so on and writing research papers. Mm. Whereas what you really want to do mm. is do something deep go through a dip, right? And be known as an expert in an area having done some substantial work, right? Correct. I think it is much better to write a book. Okay? <laughs> no, I didn't. I was not supposed to be a joke. Okay? <laughs> but the way you put it, it's like PhD and writing the book. Well, actually, when you think about it, both are actually the same amount of effort. You do go through the dip. You end up coming out at the other side of the dip as an expert. And yeah, it takes a long time. Yeah, and the reputational, this is also similar, right? Yeah. This is Dr. Shrikant versus this is Shrikant who's written a book on this topic, right? They have similar levels of uh, reputational uh, yeah cachet, yeah right? so right. so and the reason hmm. to write a book writing a book is going to force you to go deep into a topic learn things that you haven't learned uh, to uh, i mean pick an area huh. whatever area you thought you wanted to do a phd in huh. instead decide to write a book uh, in that area and hmm. again you can take a guide Right, somebody who can guide you both on the uh, subject matter of it, subject and matter, and on the writing uh, aspects. aspects. Of it. But yeah. basically, and in terms of time, it will probably take you that much uh, time, and the effort will be there, the dip will be there. I can guarantee you that, unlike you know, mm -hmm. when you are one third of the way through the book, you will decide that, oh my God, this is a complete waste of time, and nobody cares about this book, and why am I doing this? And you have the whole reason for doing it is that you have to get through this, right? If it wasn't difficult, everybody would be writing a book and yeah. you know it wouldn't have any value. So fascinating that comparison between write, uh, doing a PhD and writing a book. But mm. here is the the ultimate question that I think mm. will uh, will will mm. de decide it, decide whether or not to do a PhD for a lot mm. of people, which is mm. scope kya hai? See, like again, what is mm. what can I what are my job prospects after doing the PhD how will they will they improve will they stay the yeah. same will so they change again, I can answer only for stem uh, areas I don't know about other areas but in stem uh, yes job prospects do increase primarily if you uh, listen to the first advice I gave which is pick a good college and a good guide right mm. in that case a job almost uh, takes care of itself but it's a long term investment, hmm. right? Hmm. Because your job and this and that are two year, three year uh, horizon things. Hmm. Though that keeps changing. But a PhD will stick with you for the next 30 years. Correct. 
uh okay let me put you on the spot and ask you who should not do a phd you already gave one example of somebody mid career who wants to uh, right. uh gain some kind of an expertise or some kind of a yeah. stamp about yeah. being an expert in some right. something but are there any other categories well, of people of course, that you would the thing is again talking about a stem phd right hmm. if you do not like stem hmm. right if you do not like maths or physics or whatever the subject hmm. that you shouldn't be doing a phd in it obviously right that, uh, yeah. and there is a lot of people who are right you know, who got in to do that because you know that was the best option after 12th standard and the parents pushed them towards it hmm. uh, so basically you want to do a phd in an area that you are going to find interesting that you are going to enjoy right you cannot get through the dip unless it is something you like hmm. right so make sure that you do that okay one final question suppose i start doing a phd hmm. uh i hit the dip hmm. but i can't come out of the dip for some reason it's not working out so see that is one of the more difficult questions in general about the dip not just a phd huh. which is knowing whether When to, to quit. quit or not hmm. uh the two pieces of advice i will give you huh. is one know that the dip exists and it hit, hits everybody huh. so that almost everybody goes through this feeling of maybe i should quit huh. so definitely the time to quit is not right now right you should stick around for longer than what you think you should be doing second mm. is that advantage of be, doing a phd is that there is going to be an advisor there are going to be other people who have gone through this right mm, mm. uh take their advice right if your advisor uh thinks you should continue you should continue right because your advisor knows better than you what makes sense hmm right? that makes sense that yeah. makes sense and it's that's it's only if things are not working out with the advisor at all you cannot get along with him or her then maybe you consider quitting yeah that or of course or finding a different advisor huh. that of course hmm. makes even more sense navin navin has made a lot of sense today i said one last question but i have one more question yes money's finances yes. so um, payments fees huh. yeah usually if you are doing a phd hmm. uh you should get funding of some sort you should be getting a stipend of some sort right hmm. uh so in that sense the phd should be self funding right the bigger question that people have about the money hmm. is that for those 5 years 6 years huh. you are letting go of a fat salary and your classmates are already earning in multiples yes uh, of you right and the simple answer i have for you is that this is um, taking to short term of a view okay. right a phd is 5 years your career is 35 years right this 5 years doesn't make that much of a difference because most of your earning is anyway in the last 10 years of your career right so the earnings in the first 5 years are not that important to your long term career the second thing is that the whole point of doing a phd hmm. is that it puts you in a different orbit at the end of it uh, yeah right? baby so at the end of the phd the slope of your curve will be different from the slope of everybody else's curve hmm see uh, the thing about doing a phd is you get to sit on that chair and not this one <laughs> there you go shrikant yes. navin on that chair this is future iq thank you thank you for watching till the end if you like this episode check out these others you might like them also and please share with your friends i'm sure they will also like these thank you